Welcome back to our 2024 football preseason educational video series. Thank you for joining us today. Today's video, we're going to focus specifically on dead ball officiating in regards to those out-of-bounds plays that go out-of-bounds into the sideline, into the opponent's uh, team bench area or sideline area. And we're going to talk about, we'll take a look at a couple of plays and then talk about what we can do to improve our officiating those plays and better observe the action so that we can become better officials. So let's get into the plays. All right. To be a great official, you need to be a great dead ball official. Being a great dead ball official will help your game tremendously. Keep that in mind in every one of your games. All right. Here's our first play. We're going to look at it through live time and then we'll come back take a second look at it with some diagrams. So we see the play come towards the line judge side, and then we see the play go out of bounds there right before the 36. And right here, we have a player in the opponent's team bench area. Now, nothing happens, but as we come back to this play and take a second look and have the diagrams, we're going to see a couple things we can do to improve here. Okay, so the player goes out on the team bench. He's surrounded by uh, the other players. We see him right here on the mat. We see the back judge doing a great job coming to close down, coming to help the line judge. Specifically, though, the line judge has turned and facing in, really needs to turn out and observe the action behind him in the out of bounds area, in the team bench area. That's where his focus needs to be. If we do that, we can help to clean that play up. And now nothing happens here, but if we can do that, we can see what's going on out there and maybe prevent something or if something does happen, we'll be able to see it and appropriately flag it if need be. So keep that in mind. You got to turn out of bounds on these plays. Our second play here involves a sideline where we have an incomplete pass on the near sideline on the line judge side. Ball goes out of bounds. We can see it right here. And he turns and the line judge bends down to get the ball. Okay, so let's break this play down a little bit further. And take a look at it a second time. So first of all, we have the play in the sideline. Opponent player goes into the team bench. We immediately see the umpire turning towards the far sideline. And I'm assuming maybe to get the ball, I don't know. Let's take an extra two seconds or so forth and observe the action to make sure the players are done. Just because we sound the whistle, the play's over, does not mean that the players are done playing. We need to keep our focus on dead ball officiating primary and then worry about getting the ball spotted. We can always reset play clock when needed. So that's first thing. Second of all here is when the ball goes over like this or incomplete, you can see the line judge immediately going for the ball and not observing. He has a player right there in front of him from the white team standing next to a player from the black team who gives him a slight shove, nothing, nothing excessive, but it could have, could have escalated. And if you don't see this, and something happens and it escalates more and we don't see it and we don't flag it. It, it. It's a reflection. It's a negative reflection. There's no rush to get the ball. What's more important is to get those players separated, make sure they're done. And it only takes maybe a second, two, maybe three seconds. Then we can get the ball, get the ball in and get it spotted. And like I said, if we really need to, if too much time has come off the clock, the, the play clock can be corrected or reset 25 seconds if need be. But our primary needs to be keeping these players from having additional action or additional things. Remember, we've got to focus on the players first because on plays like this, something can happen in that sideline and this video is going to catch it, but we don't catch it and it's a negative reflection. And we can become better officials if we take the extra two, maybe three seconds to observe the action in the sideline area. So we're going to take a look at a third play here where we're going to observe great sideline mechanics and dead ball officiating by the line judge here. As you can see, the play goes out of bounds and we're going to take a look at it again with some diagram. We're going to see the line judge observe the play. He stays on top of it. He comes down. Look where his head is. Turned. He's turned, turning out of bounds. He's looking at the action out of bounds. He's, he's got a flag here. He's observing that out of bounds dead ball area so that he can observe the action all the way to the end, even after we've blown the whistle. Then he, you can see him right there at the end. He gives the stop the clock signal. And we're going to look at it again from the end zone here. This is great mechanics here by the line judge. This is what we want to do. See him come down, turns out, watches the play throws his flag, continues to observe the play and officiate the dead ball out of bounds area. He's got the spot. 
He's doing everything he needs to do to continue to officiate this play in his area. And the other officials can come over and help clean up or close down if needed. They need to observe and continue to dead ball officiate. So we all need to focus on our dead ball officiating on every play this year. And we will get better and we will prevent or at least observe some of this additional action that could occur. Final note here. Remember, in a game, every play lasts maybe four five seconds. We have some plays that may go on a little bit longer than that, but on average, play maybe lasts five seconds. And if we take the number of plays in our game, in a high school game, sometimes you're around 145, 150 plays, you're looking about 12 minutes total of live ball action, meaning from the snap to the end of the play. So we're officiating about 12 minutes of live ball, but we know that we're out there on that field for much longer than 12 minutes. So 80, 85% of the time we're out there, we are dead ball officials. So that's just how important it is that we have to be quality at being a dead ball official because we are officiating more dead ball than we are really live ball on a football field. Keep that in mind. Thank you very much for joining us this week and reviewing this video. Hope you have a great week. Until next time, take care.